Tuesday, May 22nd, 3 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at the mysterious return of a banned chemical that's finding its way back into the atmosphere, and nobody knows how. We're going to get to that story here in just a minute, but first I want to touch on just some basics of UV and UV light and how it affects Earth and, and what we do know about UV, at least based off of our measurements that we've taken last year. Uh, with respect to the measurements we're getting this year. You're looking at a global map of UV light distribution around planet Earth. The higher numbers are at the equator. That's the pinks and the whites. You're looking at 14, actually 13, 14, 15, even up into 16. Um, generally, those are around the equator. They don't normally get up into the higher latitudes. The higher up the latitude you go and the lower latitudes you go, the lower the UV. That's how it's always been. And as you can see, the blues are in the one and two areas. The greens, like through the, the middle of the United States and Central Europe, you're looking at uh, threes, fours, sixes. Down into southern Mexico, you start getting up into the, the twelves and thirteens. And these are just averages. And this map um, you know, it could be even updated more because the UV's actually gone up, at least from our measurements. But one thing I want you to notice, what do these maps have in common? What you're looking at here is a total precipitable water map, and this is a global map. Does it look kind of similar to the UV map? It is similar because the UV affects the global precipitation on Earth. Always has. So if the UV is a little higher this year with regard to its presence, at least in the tropics, do you think that could influence the chances of tropical storms this year during hurricane season? Could, and I think it already is. Seeing a lot of tropical moisture making its way up into the lower 48 right now as I do this video. And I think it's because the UV is higher. And let me explain. Here at this channel, we started measuring UV last year, taking UV readings every day throughout the summer, part of the fall, took several hundred, in fact. Right now, we're up over 300, including this year's measurements. Last year, what we were doing was basically establishing a base of numerical values that were relative to our study. Now that we have a base and we're recording UV from those same locations this year, we can compare this year's numbers to last year's. And they're relevant to one another with regard to whether they've gone up or down. We measure the total UV AB and we measure UVC, which has been detected and confirmed by a team of scientists and the peer-reviewed white paper is here at the website. And UVC should not make it to the ground. Uh, it shouldn't even be measurable at ground level. But it is, and in fact, we're measuring it on a daily basis at ground level, and it should be zero. One other reading I want to point out before I get to the article is a reading I got yesterday that really surprised me, and it's the last video right here. That reading you see is from Abbotsford, British Columbia. Abbotsford, British Columbia is way up here. The bulk of the UV is way down here. The numerical value that his instrument, and his instrument's accurate because it doesn't always give these high readings. And not only his instrument, but we have a team member that measures from Northern Oregon. He's been getting high readings this year also. 13 plus in Northern Oregon. With respect to our numerical values from last year, his numbers never reached 9 or 10. So this year, his numbers with his instrument are higher. This is his first year of reading, so we can't really say, okay, well, we compare it to last year because we can't. So in all fairness, I have to say that. But if we compare it to what we've been seeing out of Northern Oregon and Montana, his high reading numbers are in line with theirs as well because our friend from Montana, Ty, has been consistently delivering high UV numbers already this year, much higher than he's seen last year. In fact, he had a measurement this year of 14, 14 plus, and we're not even officially into summer yet. And that's right over here in Montana. We're seeing 14s, or at least we have, 
We saw 15 yesterday just at the uh, across the border in Canada at the 49 degree latitude. And Abbotsford is not at a uh, in the elevations. That's about 150 feet above sea level. So nor is the area in uh, Beaverton, Oregon, where he's been getting high readings this year also, had a 13.3 that actually really surprised him. So 13s in Northern Oregon, 14s in Montana, 15.5 in Southern Canada. Right there it is. So that tells us that there could be something going on with the ozone. If Earth's magnetic field, let's say it were to tilt a little bit, could it affect the performance of the ozone layer? I don't know. I suppose it could, but here's one thing that does affect the performance of the ozone layer, and that um, is this chemical known as CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons. For some reason, they've returned, and the numbers are going up, and nobody knows why. That's a story here from cbc.ca out of Canada. Emissions of banned ozone-eating chemical rise mysteriously. Almost zero production reported, but 13,000 tons released per year since 2013. This article is dated May 16th of 2018. Something strange is happening with the now banned chemical that eats away at Earth's protective ozone layer. Scientists say there's more of it, not less, like there should be, going into the atmosphere, and they don't know where it's coming from. When a hole in the ozone formed over Antarctica, countries around the world back in 1987 agreed to phase out several types of ozone-depleting chemicals called chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, and production was banned. Emissions fell and the hole slowly shrank. But starting in 2013, emissions of the second most common kind started rising. And the chemical called CFC-11 was used for making foam, degreasing stains, and for refrigeration. It's the most surprising and unexpected observation I've made in 27 years of measurements. And that's coming from the lead study author at NOAA. Emissions today are about the same as they were nearly 20 years ago. That doesn't even make sense. So they don't know where this chemical is coming from. They don't know how it's making its way into the atmosphere. But one thing they do know, it, it does affect the performance of the ozone that protects us from radiation from space. This thin blue line, that's all we got. That right there is what separates the men from the boys. That's it. So if this chemical keeps rising up into that thin blue line, it affects the performance of the ozone. If it keeps affecting the performance of the ozone, do you think we might start seeing higher UV numbers at ground level? I would say we probably would. And I think we would also start to see record hurricanes around the world, or at least during hurricane season through the tropics. And we're starting to see active uh, possibilities, um, and it's not even officially hurricane season. And But that's not that uncommon. But we're already seeing tropical moisture going up into the southeastern part of the United States today. This is right now. I think it's a side effect of the, the higher UV numbers. It does affect the moisture or the precipitation of the planet. It always has. That's why these maps look very similar. High UV across the center, and that's, you got your tropical rainforest, you've got the tropical islands, that's why they're tropical. They have a lot of moisture, it's because of the UV. So anyway guys, um, CFCs are making a comeback and nobody knows why. So that is kind of concerning. You can protect yourself. This is UVC. This shouldn't even be measured at ground level. But it is being measured at ground level, and it's been confirmed by scientists and universities around the world. So there is something going on with the ozone. If it's fixable, you know, we thought we solved that problem at least with CFCs back in 1987. They recognized they were a problem for the ozone 
corrected the problem and did see an improvement, but for whatever reasons, they are mysteriously coming back, and no one knows why. We'll continue to do UV reports on our end, guys, and, and we'll document the anomalies that we see. Because, like I said, last year we established a set of numerical values relevant to our study here at Team UV with regard to taking measurements. Now we have something to compare this year's numbers to, last year's. And our numbers this year, at least with regard to the higher latitudes of Earth, the UV is higher. We're starting to get reports from Amsterdam, from our friend over there, Ray, sent us readings last year from right in here, 52 degree north latitude, right around 51, 52. UV there shouldn't be above, what, four, maybe five. Last year, we do have numerical values that he established from giving day-to-day -day readings from Amsterdam. Barely did we see a reading even in the mid-summer months of over two maybe three, and that was a good thing. That told us that the ozone was good and it was doing its job. This year, we're already seeing readings of above six, and it's not even summertime yet. And that's coming from the 51, 52 degree north latitude. So there could very well be something going on with the ozone layer once again. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a super day and be safe out there.